Hello, good morning and good evening. My name is Connor and today I will be showing you my latest retro themed purchase, an Ambonic RG35XX, which is a low cost handheld game emulator. I ordered this one direct from Ambonic's website as soon as the pre-orders went live. It took me several weeks to actually get my hands on it though, as they don't ship to my little island directly, so I had to have it sent to somebody in the UK who then forwarded it on to me. They are currently selling for around £45 plus shipping, which puts this on the low end budget side of the emulation handheld market. Anyway, let's crack open this little bugger. The box itself is fairly basic, you can see here that I've got the grey version, they also offer an atomic purple and a clear variant. In the box we've got the handheld itself inside a little bag, under the box insert we find some instructions and a screen protector. There's also a USB A to C cable in the box, but I didn't see that at this moment in time during the filming. The instructions are fairly basic, a few button combos and a bunch of badly translated English. I can never fold these things back up properly. Let's take a look at the device. There's a piece of foam protecting the front, which is nice. I mean, these things have got to come halfway around the world, so it all helps. As you can see, it's modelled on the original DMG Game Boy. Although, the more I look at it, the more it reminds me of the Game Boy Pocket, actually, in terms of size and overall design. It's a little bit more boxy than the DMG. On the front, it's got a somewhat mushy feeling D-pad. A, B, X and Y face buttons, a start and select button, and a menu button nipple thing in the centre. On the rear we've got four shoulder buttons, L1, L2, R1 and R2. On the left hand side we've got a volume rocker, up and down. On the right we've got a power and reset buttons. Underneath those we've got two micro SD card slots. The first one holds the operating system and your ROM files and the second one is capable of storing even more ROMs. The bottom of the device has a USB-C port for charging, as well as a 3.5mm headphone jack. Up top we've got a micro HDMI out port and some status LEDs. Ok, now we've seen the hardware, let's fire her up shall we? It takes a second to boot up, but once it has we're presented with this menu screen here. From left to right we have our games ROMs library, favourites, history, a search function and finally settings. So off the bat this thing comes loaded with a bunch of games already installed. Most of the 8 and 16 bit games that you'd expect to find are here, however there are some noticeable omissions which I'll get to in a sec. I won't go through all of the emulators because there's a lot and I'm lazy so I'll put a list on screen but you'll be happy to know that it can handle the main stuff like NES, Super Nintendo, Mega Drive, Game Boy, Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance as well as the PlayStation 1 which is kind of the star of the show here. So let's play some games and see what the performance is like. You won't be surprised to hear that the RG35XX handles Game Boy and Game Boy Color games just fine. Sonic 3 and Knuckles on the Mega Drive is also really good. I don't see any screen tearing and to my ears the audio sounds right. Often Mega Drive sound emulation can be a bit choppy or otherwise just off on some devices, especially on the low end, but this sounds fine to me. Super Nintendo is also rock solid, even though emulators like these are getting so cheap in price, the hardware is still good enough to handle basically anything up to the 16-bit era consoles without any issues. Right, okay, something a bit more challenging. Let's see what PlayStation 1 is like. Crash Bandicoot 2, Cortex Strikes Back, looks and plays absolutely fantastically. I don't notice any issues with either screen tearing or uh, weird graphical issues. The sound is perfect. The only thing I do notice is a slight stutter during cutscenes, just as they start. It's a blink and you'll miss it event, but during actual gameplay, it handles it just fine. The screen on this really is gorgeous. I do hope it comes across properly on camera. I hope you can see just how nice this little 3.5 LCD is. While I'm here, I'm going to show you the menu options. So at any point in a game, you can press the menu nipple and you'll get access to a few options. Brightness, saving and loading. Um, there are also a few screen filter options that we can cycle through. A notable exception out of the box is the ability to change the screen resolution or the scaling of the, of the game. Most games are ever so slightly stretched to accommodate the screen and there's currently no way to change that out of the box. 
While the game runs fine, I do notice that I'm having some difficulty moving precisely. As I mentioned earlier, the D-pad is a bit mushy. It feels like as I'm pressing up on the D-pad, it's catching the left and right inputs, for example. It took a little bit to get used to, and while I was able to combat this by being a little bit more direct with my button presses, it's something to be aware of. I'm going to try Pac-Man World, also for the PlayStation 1, and I'm running into the same problem with the inputs here. Hopefully you can see what I mean. It's, it's a little bit difficult um, to try and be precise with your platforming. However, in other games where precise input might be less of a concern, we do seem to be having a bit more luck. I'm playing Gran Turismo here, and despite my poor driving skills, which I'd attribute more to trying to play through a camera's viewfinder, it seems fine. The mushy input seems like less of a problem. Going back to the list of installed ROMs, you'll notice that there's a lot of duplicates and also the occasional hacked ROM included by default. For example, we have Contra listed here for both Vertical Arcade and Standard Main. Ignoring the awkward of playing these games vertically like this with your hands to the side, it's nice to have the option to play them like this in a more appropriate orientation. Although, you can go into the settings and rotate the screen back to normal, which in my opinion kind of defeats the point. At any point while you're in the ROMs menu, you can mark a game as a favourite, so you can access it more easily from the main screen. It is important to note that out of the box, the favourite menu isn't listed alphabetically. Instead, listing your games in the order that you favourited them, which is a bit annoying. While the list of included games is extensive, it doesn't include everything. I noticed pretty quickly that there's no Mario games anywhere on here. I use the search function and that confirms it, there's no Mario titles. I can understand why this is from a legal perspective. Nintendo have shown themselves to be pretty on the ball when it comes to going after people who distribute their software illegally. But that hasn't stopped Ambenic from including Metroid and Zelda on here. Weird. Let's take a look at that HDMI out. Please do excuse the mess in the background, but you can see that I've got the RG35XX hooked up to a micro to full size HDMI adapter, which is then connected to a monitor. When using the video out, the screen on the device turns off and is mirrored to the, your output device. I don't notice any tearing or input delay while playing like this, which is nice. This monitor doesn't have any built-in speakers, however, I can remedy that by using my capture device. I've hooked the HDMI adapter into my Shadowcast capture card and plugged that into my MacBook. As you can see here, Donkey Kong Country for the SNES looks, and more importantly, sounds great. The original marketing for the RG35XX mentioned support for multiplayer and controller support. I plugged a controller into the USB-C port and instead of being picked up as player 2, it was picking it up as player 1. I couldn't seem to get a controller to be recognised as a second input, so I'm not quite sure what the deal with that is. With that out of the way, I wanted to just focus on the size of this thing for a moment. Midway through 2022, I managed to get my hands on a MiU Mini. Now, my overall excitement and happiness at getting one was soon overshadowed by the fact that it was just too small for my massive hands. I suffered immediate buyer's remorse, and I'll be honest, I wish that I bought something much bigger. I am happy to report, however, that the RG35XX is much nicer in the hands. As you can see here, the difference between the two is night and day. It's not so big that you can't pocket it. It's big enough that it doesn't hurt my hands after an extended gameplay session. I can more easily reach the shoulder buttons, but it's still small enough that I can put it in my pocket in its case without a problem. Just for the sake of completeness, here it is in comparison next to an old Droid Go, which has been my go-to emulation device now for a few years. So, what are my thoughts after playing with the RG35XX for a little while? I like it, it's a capable little device, which can handle basically anything 8 and 16 bit with PlayStation 1 thrown in as a nice bonus. It's important to note that any PlayStation titles which require analog sticks, like Ape Escape, won't work because we only have the D-pad as an input. Early PlayStation titles are the ones that you're going to want to, to look at. The overall presentation is nice, with a clean layout and a gorgeous LCD screen which looks great from basically all angles. It isn't perfect, but that always seems to be the case with these Chinese handheld emulators. There's always one thing which lets them down. In the RG35XX's case, it's the D-pad and the stock software. The emulation and visual filter options are basic or missing completely, and the menu navigation often feels sluggish. 
Ambonic have since released a new version of the device firmware which apparently addresses some of these concerns but I haven't been able to test that out myself. There is an alternative operating system available for the RG35XX called Garlic OS and I am planning a more in-depth video about that soon. I also believe I have an answer to the mushy D-pad inputs issue so consider subscribing so you don't miss out on those videos. So those are my thoughts and feelings on the Ambonic RG35XX. I'd love to hear from you guys. Have you bought one or are you thinking about getting one? Has this review helped you uh, decide whether or not to pull the trigger and order one for yourself? Please do let me know in the comments down below. I would like to thank you all very much for watching. I shall catch you guys on the next one. Bye.